to stretch and challenge my students. Um, I would always use robust learning objectives, ensuring that there's some evaluation. At the end, they have a list of evaluation questions that they all have to complete in order to stretch and challenge themselves and to set new targets. Um, I would always make sure I've got extension activities for them to um, complete. So whenever they've finished a task and they've got a little bit of downtime, um, it gives them an opportunity to look at other things that they might need to um, develop. And during a task, I would always use robust questioning techniques, working my way through the blooms, and again, ensuring that they evaluate, look at alternatives of how they could possibly do things better, um, and ensure that new targets are set for them um, using that technique. In the hospitality and catering sector, stretch and challenge is one of those topics that almost comes naturally to students. They're occupationally uh, based, they want to work with their hands. So we try and encourage them almost from day one to embrace the, the concept that they've got control of what they're doing, what they're making, what they're serving. Um, we then look at how they can evaluate their work at the end, how they can improve on it. They have a little recording diary where we make comments about what they did well and how they can improve on it. We challenge them to come up with ideas themselves about improving. Um, as they lead on to the assessments, we look back at what they've done previously and we ask them to try and really look at how they can make an improvement to their dish so that they can actually stretch and challenge themselves to get a higher grade. Because it's very much a visual field as well, if it looks nice on the plate so they can take a photograph of that themselves, they can use that for their records, they can then look back at what they've done previously, how they can make on it, how they can improve on it. We do encourage them to come with ideas, especially when the restaurant's open and they're producing food for the restaurant. We look for them to give us ideas about how they might want to serve that dish and they might want to change it from what it normally is to come with an agreement about it. We look for the students to be proactive at all the times rather than having kind of reactive response. We want to push them themselves to come up with what they can do, how they can make that better and then give them the feedback on that. So my top three tips for stretching and challenging apprentices would be, first of all, robust questioning techniques for them, ensuring that um, they can evaluate the work that they've done for their new targets. Secondly, it would be to improve their soft skills, employability skills, uh, their values and behaviours, especially when they're working in the workplace, and to ensure that they always have extension activities to be working towards. I'd say tip one is to get the students to take ownership of what they're doing, be proud of what they've achieved. If it's not worked out as well as they thought it would do, it's still something they've made, something they've actually produced themselves, even from a basic knife chop they've actually got quite nicely, take ownership of that so they can proceed on to more advanced skills, more advanced techniques. We encourage them to take photographs of what they've done, we encourage them to record what they've done and reflect on what they've done as well so they can actually think about it. Tip number two, follow us on from that naturally. Try and record what they've done themselves. We have a reflective diary, a recording diary where they record what they've done. We try and link that into, into topics like English and Maths where they maybe have to do some weigh-in, estimate wastage, try and build in some of those core skills that are essential as well so they can see the bigger picture. 